I have learned a lot about how the spiritual world moves especially during the night. In the previous video I shared some mysteries but today I want to go deeper into how spiritual battles are fought. The spiritual world is not something simple, it has three stages that are activated throughout the day, starting from 6 in the afternoon when the first spiritual portals begin to open. These first portals that we call minions are occupied by spirits of lower hierarchy which begin to prepare the environment for what is to come later. Their task is to set the ground influencing what will happen the next day, but it is from 11.30 at night when things really intensify at that time the portals of greater power open bringing with them spirits of high hierarchy, principalities powers and the so-called hosts of evil spirits that operate without mercy causing accidents murders and crimes, these spirits do not know mercy, and their job is to carry out direct orders from the enemy. The principalities for their part are those that govern regions, they are assigned to different nations and countries, they are the ones who establish the attack strategies that the spirits of lower hierarchy will later execute. Each one has a specific task and their meetings are held in the darkest hours of the dawn when the enemy draws up his plans, but brothers we are not defenseless, although the enemy has its well organized structure we have a greater power, the power of God and prayer. When we talk about the principalities that are already assigned we refer to those high-ranking spirits that have the direct charge of bringing all the information to the enemy, these principalities do not act alone they are organized. They already had their meeting and each one knows exactly what their task is, they function like an army in which each soldier has a job to do and the commander in this case the enemy gives them specific orders. This is the level of organization that we face in the spiritual world, starting at 11.30 at night the portals that open are no longer those of lesser spirits at this time spirits of higher hierarchy manifest, many of which we do not even know, the Lord himself tells us in Jeremiah 33-3 cry to me and I will answer you and show you great and hidden things that you do not know, this means that there are things in the spiritual world that we have not yet discovered spirits that every day transform and change their ways in spiritual battles, we send these spirits to the heavenly dungeon but when they serve their sentence the enemy releases them again, it is a constant struggle that is why our spiritual warfare must begin at 10 at night, as Daniel who prayed three times a day, morning afternoon and night, prayer is our main weapon to stop the enemy's plans since at midnight, the enemy gathers his forces and plans what will happen the next day. He does not do it during the day but at dawn, and it is in those hours when we must be more alert, at 3 in the morning is when the most direct portal of the enemy opens, at that time spirits of the lowest levels begin to act under the orders of Leviathan, Belzebub and Lucifer himself, these are spirits of high hierarchy and the battle that is fought is intense, that is why we must be prepared not only from midnight but even from 6 in the afternoon. When we begin our spiritual war it is the moment when the enemy sends a spirit of sleep, laziness and discouragement to prevent us from praying or fasting, many people want to pray at dawn but feel overwhelmed by tiredness and sudden sleep, this is not a coincidence it is the work of an unclean spirit called Belphegor, that seeks to prevent us from approaching God in prayer. This spirit of laziness manifests itself with physical and mental fatigue just when we want to seek God. You suddenly feel that you cannot stay awake or that something prevents you from fasting. It is a spiritual struggle and those unclean spirits act precisely so that we do not reach that connection with God. That is why it is so important to recognize them and rebuke them in the name of Jesus. These spirits operate from the depths like the man in the cemetery who seeks to attack us through discouragement and fatigue. But we as children of God know that we are not alone in this battle. We can defeat these spirits, but the key is to always be vigilant and prepared for spiritual warfare. There is a spirit that seeks to confuse and pretends to be the man Saint Elias. This spirit has the ability to attack us especially when we propose to do something spiritual like fasting. When one prepares to fast, this spirit throws darts of illness or physical discomfort specifically at the stomach so that the fast is interrupted. Its objective is clearly to weaken you physically so that when the time comes to pray, you will not have the strength. This is not a coincidence. 
The enemy knows that fasting is a powerful weapon because when we fast, we are under a special and deep covering of the Lord. In fasting, our flesh weakens, but the spirit strengthens and takes control. The secret of fasting is that while our physical body is exhausted the spirit is in a superior state ready to continue crying out, however if you do not feel the desire to pray or cry out during that time it's likely that you are under the attack of the spirit of laziness known as Belphegor. This spirit, may the Lord rebuke it, is the cause of many people when they try to pray or read the Bible to fall into a state of drowsiness or lack of energy. This spirit actively works to prevent us from having a deep connection with God. Many brothers while praying find themselves falling asleep on their knees. Others when trying to read the scriptures feel a heavy sleep that dominates them. All this is the work of Belphegor, who acts to stop our prayers and the search for God, but how to overcome this spirit, the answer is in the spiritual world. To face it, we must first cry out to God to send us his angels. The angels of God are those who have the mission of binding and chaining the spirits that try to bring laziness or tiredness to us, when we feel that these spirits are attacking us we must begin by clearing the air by worshipping the Holy Spirit and calling these angels of war. The angels of fire also play a key role in this battle because they have the power to incinerate any unclean spirit that tries to interfere. As we ask God for the presence of his angels, we feel how the spiritual atmosphere changes and the power of the Lord manifests itself in us, when we immerse ourselves in prayer and enter the spiritual world those spirits that try to stop us are forced to submit to the archangels who are assigned to our lives. These archangels are designated to protect the children of God, however it is curious how rarely we hear Christians speak of one of the most powerful angels. The angel assigned to the center of Israel this angel known as the angel of fire has a special authority in the time of the Assyrians, it was he who in a single night wiped out more than 36,000 Assyrian soldiers in fractions of seconds, this angel along with the archangels like Michael have a fundamental task in spiritual warfare. Archangel Michael, the commander of the heavenly army, is the one who leads the forces of heaven in our spiritual battles. When we ask God for Michael and his horsemen, we are invoking a high-level spiritual war. On one occasion, while I was crying out at three in the morning, I had an experience that I will never forget. That morning, while I was praying intensely, a figure appeared before me. It was a nun who was trying to pass herself off as Saint Clare. When I looked at her, I could see that her face was pale and her eyes were pale red as blood. When he tried to get close to me he couldn't at that moment the Holy Spirit took me away and I began to speak in tongues it was then that I had a clear vision, I saw a character with large open wings and a sword of fire in his hands, while I looked beyond I saw a heavenly army of horses coming destroying all the evil spirits that had been sent to finish me off, the enemy had sent this spiritual figure to destroy me but they didn't succeed. The power of God manifested itself and the archangel Michael along with his hosts took control that day, I understood even more the importance of always being under the coverage of the Lord especially when we face such dark forces, that morning the enemy's plan didn't work and you know why because I had to cry out to God and declare Jehovah here I am, at that moment I felt like God backed me up in the spiritual world if you don't have authority no spirit is going to back down first you must be sure of how you are before God, you can't enter into spiritual battle if you are spiritually wrong, because you will come out more beaten than you entered, before doing spiritual warfare you must go into the secret humble yourself ask for forgiveness and once you are clean before the Lord you can enter that spiritual dimension, if you do not do it you will be fighting alone and without divine support, and that battle will be lost from the beginning. How can I tell you to do spiritual warfare, at least three times a week you should do a fast either until three or six in the afternoon. These fasts although they seem difficult build your body and strengthen your spirit they are like training for the great battles that we face, Jesus himself fasted for forty days and forty nights because he knew that his spirit was going to need to be in control over the flesh. He needed his humanity to be subject to spiritual power just as Adam was before he fell. That one-on-one -on -one connection with God is what allows us to resist any attack from the enemy, 
when the spirits come to make war on you they know exactly who to attack they are not going to send you a spirit like Belshbub, because he know that if you are not at the right level, you cannot even touch his ankles. You are not going to say I bind you or I rebuke you. You must know what level you are at. There are 72 levels in the spiritual world and within those levels there are 7 hierarchies. You must know the level you are at. And make sure you are covered by the blood of Christ. You cannot enter into a spiritual battle knowing that something in you is not right in your life. If I had not been right with the Lord that morning, that none sent to destroy me would have been successful. The Lord allows us to face those battles but always with the purpose of being victorious. And when we are victorious, we do it so that with authority we can declare that all chains are broken. There is something powerful in the declaration with our mouth when you speak with faith in the spiritual world. An atmosphere is activated and what you have declared becomes a reality. We see a clear example in Daniel, who fasted for 21 days, he did not do it by chance, he did it so that the principality that held back his blessing will release it. Today many people are fighting in the spiritual world but they are doing it the wrong way, you cannot fight for things that do not belong to you, you must fight for what is rightfully yours, if you get distracted fighting for things beyond your reach those blessings that belong to you will not come to you, let me explain it more clearly, if I ask the Lord to be a great evangelist tomorrow and the enemy gets in my way, my fight cannot be about having a house or a car. I must first win the spiritual battle about my calling as an evangelist, I cannot fight multiple wars at the same time because I am mortal, although the Lord helps us to overcome, once you have won a battle then you can begin to fight for the others, as the scripture says sometimes we do not receive because we ask wrong, you ask wrong you are not asking according to the will of God, what happens is that when you enter the spiritual world if you are not aligned with the Father your wishes are not fulfilled as you expect. God wants our requests to be sincere and connected with his purpose, and to help us in that communication he gives us heavenly languages comma this is essential in the spiritual battle because it gives us a direct way to connect with the creator without interference from the enemy, as Christians our fight is with the principalities that make war on us individually, you cannot fight against the principality that is attacking me without first having defeated the one that is attacking you first. You must make sure that you have obtained victory in your own battle before joining to another's. Many times people say I join your fight but they have really won their own spiritual battle. The Lord gives you the victory in your personal fight before you can join another's. To enter the spiritual world the first thing you must do is humble yourself worship and conquer the presence of the Holy Spirit only then will you be prepared for the real battle. It is not just about rebuking demons first you have to invoke the presence of God. Sometimes I see people who begin to rebuke demons without first having sought the presence of the Holy Spirit this is not right, when he cry out to the Lord God where are angels in response to a prayer in that sense worship plays a crucial role, look at the example of David, David did not dedicate himself to rebuking demons he worshipped and when he played the harp the demons that afflicted Saul calmed down and left, worship has a power that transforms the environment. It is more powerful than many believe, when you cannot pray or you are in the middle of a spiritual battle and you struggle to move forward the Lord tells you to worship why because as Psalm 150 says, everything that breathes praises Jehovah, he moves in the midst of praise and therein lies the power when you worship with all your heart something changes in the spiritual world, God fills you more with his spirit when he sees that you praise him from the depths of your being. It is not about speaking in tongues or making a lot of noise, but about a sincere praise that comes from the most intimate of your heart, that is what really disturbs the enemy when you are on your knees moaning to the Lord your praise shakes the heavens and unleashes victory, a clear example is that of Anna, who moaned in her prayer, the prophet thought she was drunk but in reality was pouring out her soul before God. In secret Jesus taught us that we should not pray to be seen as those who pray in the corners seeking recognition he invites us to enter our secret room where our father who sees in secret, there are people who may not have the level of authority necessary to rebuke certain spirits, but as I have told you, if they worship, demons they go away. The Bible says that God dwells in the midst of the praise of his people.
If you worship, you create an environment in which God manifests himself and it is not so much the fact of rebuking that changes the atmosphere but the worship itself. Exactly, worship has such great power that it encompasses everything at that moment. However, there is something I want to say and it is that many people do not fully understand what it means to be in a spiritual war. Sometimes I see that they try to rebuke principalities of other countries when in reality they have much stronger principalities in their own environment. How can you go to rebuke a principality in Haiti for example when you have not even defeated demons that are in your own house, my soul adores God but there is a truth that cannot be ignored, if you have not received victory over the spirit that is affecting you here how do you intend to knock down he who is there, it is something that happens very frequently. People go to other houses to rebuke demons when they have not even been able to defeat the spirits that inhabit their own home, what they end up doing extracting the demons that are in that house to their own. I remember one time a lady went to rebuke demons in someone else's house, when she did it the demon left that house but was not destroyed and the demon simply moved to the lady's house, after a short time her home was devastated and her family was never the same again. Why did this happen because she had no address without address there is no victory, if God has not told you to go rebuke a spirit you do not have the necessary support to do it, when God calls God supports, but if he has not given you permission to fight that battle do not get involved, what many times we do not understand is that some of the worst spirits are not in distant places they are in our own houses in our own homes. These spirits if you have not overcome them in your house you are not going to overcome them in another place, imagine that you have a spiritual war with seven different spirits, if you are not praying in your house if you are not fasting if you are not seeking God if you are not reading the Bible, then how are you going to rebuke those spirits, you cannot come to another house full of faith to fight when in yours you are not doing anything. The spirits observe what you do and when you confront them they point at you and say why do you rebuke me if in your house you do nothing, we must learn that there are levels in the spiritual world the Lord gives us the ability to win at certain levels, but we cannot fight against a principality that is above us if we have not yet overcome the spirits that are on a lower level is like David in his time, the first one he defeated is the lion and then the bear before facing Goliath. Today some want to fight against giants when they have not even defeated the small obstacles they have at home, when you say that you have the enemy trodden you must be sure that you are really prepared for that battle, it is not just about repeating words, even the archangel Michael when he was contending with the enemy for the body of Moses did not say I have you under my feet, what he said was that the Lord rebukes you. This teaches us that although we have authority in Christ we must maintain respect for the spiritual world there is a tendency in many to underestimate the enemy. But we must remember that even in our struggles there must be recognition for the world of darkness because we are not fighting against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers, respect does not mean fear it means being aware of the power and authority that we need for each battle and always depend on the Lord so that he is the one who gives us victory, although we have our struggles with the evil spirits we must remember something essential we have never been told in the Bible to insult or use obscene words to rebuke demons, the entire Bible is full of examples of how Jesus and his disciples dealt with them and you will never see them insult or disrespect, it is true that we are fighting against the enemy but that does not give us license to speak to them in a disrespectful manner or use derogatory terms, we are not fighting with physical beings but with spirits, like I said before you can't say that a demon is dirty as if it was something physical because the spirits are not like that, there are people who get carried away by emotion and start to speak badly or in a disrespectful way towards the spirits but that is not what Jesus taught us. I respect those spirits not because I agree with them but because I understand that everything in the spiritual world has an order, just like they make war on me they also respect me when they see that I am covered by the authority of the Lord, even in his confrontation with Lucifer when Jesus was tempted in the true he did not use words outside of what is in the scripture Jesus faced Satan with the word of God quoting the Bible and never went outside that framework that shows us that our way of rebuking must be in line with the word of God without falling into exaggerations or things that are not written.
Every time we rebuke it must be with the word and with authority not with insults or emotions out of control, now well I speak of spiritual warfare and prayers for the family the marriage, health or finances, it is important to understand that everything that manifests itself in the natural has first manifested itself in the spiritual. What we see here on earth is the reflection of what has already happened in the spiritual world if there are problems in your home in your marriage or in your health, it is because something is happening on a spiritual level and that is where you have to start fighting to enter that level of war, the first thing you must do is a self-renunciation, this means that you must begin by renouncing everything that has you spiritually bound. There are things in our life that if we do not renounce them and cut off their influence they will continue to give the spirits the opportunity to act against us, if there is something in your life that keeps you bound no type of prayer or rebuke will be successful because the spirit that is waging war on you still has a legal right over you, once you have overcome those ties the same spirit that was tormenting you will lose its power over you and will begin to release your blessings. This can be in the financial area in your health or in your family, when you rebuke those spirits, you must send them to the heavenly dungeon with no right of return in the name of Jesus. It is crucial that you understand that the authority is in Christ and when you act under that authority, the spirits have to obey. However, the key is that you must first cleanse your spiritual life. You cannot pretend to snatch your blessings if you have not renounced what keeps you tied. When you renounce everything that prevents you from moving forward, the spiritual doors that were closed will open and what was open will begin to flow. Before you do spiritual warfare against any spirit, you must first renounce everything that is waging war on you internally. If you have a battle with yourself, how can you fight against the spirits that come to attack you from outside? In order to face these spiritual battles, the first thing you need is to have an upright heart before the Lord. Only when your heart is clean and pure before God, all war must disappear. Many times, we do not realize that there are things that are waging war on us from within. If you have not realized, it may be for lack of knowledge when you enter the first plane of the spiritual world you are not always at war sometimes when the Lord is giving you a refreshment you can feel peace, but the battle is still latent the Lord in his mercy can carry that battle for you while he gives you a time of rest but that does not mean that you should not remain firm and ready to face any attack even if you are in that time of refreshment you continue in the fight, on the other hand there are people who seem to be in a spiritual war but in reality they are being deceived, some can speak in tongues prophesy and then minutes later they are in contention with others full of anger and lack of forgiveness that is not the work of the Holy Spirit, if there is gossip, envy or strife in your life you are not ready to do spiritual warfare, you cannot pretend to face a spirit if within you you hold resentment or bitterness towards a brother, it is important to understand that a root of bitterness or lack of forgiveness opens a door in the spiritual world, it is not only a gap it is a portal that allows the entry of spirits that bind you. Spirits like envy or resentment hide in different parts of your being when you continually feel physical pain without an apparent medical cause, maybe that you are being attacked spiritually, the spirits are like smoke, they hide in places inside you and if you are not free from those ties you will not be able to advance, to be able to do an effective spiritual war first you must be clean inside, you cannot rebuke a spirit if you still have something pending in your heart. Forgiveness is key to liberation, if you have not forgiven your brother if you still hold a grudge you are allowing those spirits to have authority over, your the lack of forgiveness not only opens a door but a portal through which legions of spirits can enter that will attack your life and your body, the spirits hide in us like smoke dominating parts of our being, they can hide in our mind causing headaches or in our body generating ailments without medical explanation. We must be aware of these attacks and know that not everything we feel is physical, many times those pains that do not have a medical explanation are a manifestation of spirits that are operating in our lives, if you are not free from those spirits you will not be able to face them, that is why before going to spiritual warfare we must cleanse our interior and forgive those who have offended us, only then will we be ready to face any battle in the spiritual world. You cannot enter the spiritual world if you have gaps open because if you do you will come out more beaten than you already were, 
It is crucial to close every door every gap that is open in your spiritual life if you do not do it you will be in danger. I remember one time during a ministration of deliverance to a person in Spain I noticed how a spirit of laziness came out of his back, I asked him how he felt and he answered that he had a terrible pain in his back I explained to him that what he was feeling was the spirit of laziness leaving his body, after that that person stopped calling me why because he did not want to be free. The same thing happens with many people today they do not want to be free they prefer to hold on to what is causing them ties instead of facing the truth of their spiritual condition, for a spirit to submit we must first recognize that something is wrong in, Jesus said that greater things than I did you will do, but those greater things only happen if we are clean of heart and soul, we cannot expect to operate in the spiritual world successfully if we are full of resentment lack of forgiveness or any other sin that affects our inner being, there are those who believe that because they manage to enter the spiritual world and perform certain actions everything is fine, but if you have a damaged heart no spirit will submit to you, the enemy knows it, just as it happened with Job when the enemy attacked him, Job was an upright man and that is why God defended him, but if your life is not in order the enemy will appear before God and say look at this person who cries to you and asks for angels to come but he does not even speak to his brother, and then the enemy will not have to leave your life because he will have the legality to remain, this matter is very deep, you cannot expect liberation if you are not willing to cleanse your life completely, many times the spirits remain because we give them the legality to do so, and until you close those doors you will not be able to get rid of them. Let's talk about something deeper now, spiritual legality, it is important to understand that the spirits remain in us or attack us because in some way we have allowed them to do so, it may be through unconfessed sins, lack of forgiveness or things that we have not yet let go, the spiritual battle cannot be won if we leave those doors open, I also want you to understand the importance of prayer at dawn, there is a special power that is unleashed in those hours and it is crucial to learn how to fight in those moments, as an example when I was involved in the occult, the things that were done at dawn had tremendous spiritual force, witches and those who practice the occult know this well because they take advantage of the darkness of dawn to do their work, so stay tuned because in our next video we are going to talk more about prayer in the early morning and the power of fasting. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel I encourage you to do so this content is to edify your life so that you learn about the spiritual world and how to defend yourself from the forces that attack.